question I often get is, can I stop taking my blood pressure pills? I've been eating healthy, avoiding salt, exercising regularly, and I've lost a lot of weight, so can I stop taking my pills? Some people may take it upon themselves to substitute the pills with changes in lifestyle. And while lifestyle is extremely important in managing blood pressure, there's a lot of different factors that play a role, including genetics and inappropriate release of certain hormones from the kidneys, specifically the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. That's what I will be focusing this video on today. I'm Mike, your pharmacist. Thank you for joining me on The Daily Dose. So most of us have a good understanding of what blood pressure is, but in this video, I wanna go into more detail. So what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is essentially the force or pressure pushing against the artery walls. Blood pressure equals cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance. Now I'm gonna explain this simply. This essentially means that your blood pressure is influenced by the volume in circulation and the resistance it needs to push against. Now the simplest way to understand blood pressure is to think of your everyday garden hose. Let's say you're watering your garden and you need more pressure in your hose. You can do one of two things. You can turn the knob to increase the volume running through the hose, or you can use your thumb to increase the resistance in the hose, thereby increasing the pressure. Our bodies essentially do the same thing. When triggered, they increase blood pressure. Now there are three major triggers that influence the body to increase blood pressure, and they are very intuitive. The first trigger that leads to an increase in blood pressure is simply a drop in blood pressure. Our kidneys actually have mechanical receptors that notice when blood pressure has dropped. When this happens, renin is released. We will talk about renin in more detail later on in this video, but it essentially causes your blood pressure to increase. The second trigger is neurological. When you have a major stressor, like you have to run away from a bear or fight that bear if you're particularly courageous, everyday stress, like work stress or school stress, have the same action. These sort of events activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is commonly referred to as the fight or flight response. The brain signals the release of adrenaline and catecholamines. It also sends a signal to the kidneys to release renin to make sure that the organs that require increased oxygen perfusion, like your leg muscles, if you're running away from a bear, get the oxygen that they require. So we talked about how the body has mechanical triggers and neurological triggers that help increase blood pressure. Now the last trigger is chemical. Low salt or low sodium in the bloodstream sends a signal to retain more water and increase blood pressure as well. It's important to keep in mind the golden rule. Wherever salt goes, water follows. So increasing sodium retention in the kidneys will increase the volume in the arteries. There are cells in part of the kidneys that check for salt concentration. They essentially taste to see if there is enough salt. If they find salt is low, they send a signal to retain more sodium, which means retaining more water, which means the volume in the arteries increases, causing a rise in blood pressure. These three triggers all activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system to increase blood pressure. This is how the system works. First, the liver releases angiotensinogen. If the body detects low blood pressure through the triggers mentioned earlier, renin is released. Renin is the enzyme responsible for converting angiotensinogen to angiotensin. Then angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin converting enzyme also has an additional role of inactivating bradykinin. This is a peptide that causes blood vessels to dilate. Angiotensin 2 then binds to angiotensin type 2 receptor or AT1 receptors. This leads to vasoconstriction and the release of aldosterone, which leads to fluid retention by absorbing sodium and excreting potassium. High blood pressure can decrease perfusion or blood flow to the kidneys, causing an inappropriate release of renin. Now this will further increase blood pressure, causing an even greater perfusion to the kidneys and the body's major organs, which can damage the kidneys and other body organs like your eyes, heart, lungs, etc. Once hypertension has progressed to the stage, diet and exercise may not be enough. They are still essential to managing high blood pressure, but you need medication to stop the formation of angiotensin 2 or blocking the action of angiotensin 2 to stop the cycle of inappropriate renin release. There are three major areas in the system that can disrupt the formation and action of angiotensin 2. The first class of drugs is called renin inhibitors. They block renin and by doing so block the formation of angiotensin 1. An example of a drug that belongs to this class is aliscarin. 
The second class of drugs are called ACE inhibitors. Now, these are the most common class of drugs used to treat high blood pressure. They block angiotensin converting enzyme, thus stopping the formation of angiotensin 2. By blocking angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE inhibitors also increase levels of bradykinin, causing blood vessels to dilate. ACE inhibitors are associated with side effects such as dry cough and angioedema, which is swelling of the lips or tongue. It is thought that increases in bradykinin is what leads to these side effects. They can also cause hyperkalemia or high levels of potassium because ACE inhibitors block sodium retention. Examples of ACE inhibitors include captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, perendopril, and ramipril. Now the final class of drugs are called angiotensin II receptor blockers or ARBs. They block angiotensin II from binding to the AT1 receptor. These drugs don't increase bradykinin levels so they have a much lower risk of dry cough and angioedema, but they can still cause hyperkalemia. Examples of drugs that belong to this class are candesartan, erbisartan, losartan, olmosartan, and valsartan. To summarize, these drugs either stop the production of angiotensin II or stop it from binding to the AT1 receptor. Now that concludes this video. I'm Mike, your pharmacist. Thank you for watching. Please like or subscribe for more health education videos.